Coming up on this episode of Sean in the Shed, I'm making a clock for my friend's daughter to learn to tell the time with. Stick around and watch how we made it. Hi, I'm Sean. Welcome to Sean in the Shed. Today, as I said in the intro, we're going to be making a clock face. It's not going to be a working clock or a clock with a mechanism like you would buy or would normally uh, make. It's going to be a clock for a young girl from one of my team at work. He's teaching his daughter how to tell the time with an analog clock. And he was going to buy a how to tell the time kit or a toy. And I said, as a maker, what did I say? I can make that. So we're going to make that today. So, we've cut the clock face. We haven't cut it today. On one of the last videos, we made some toppers for the beer kegs. I'll stick a link in the corner. And because we cut outside sections, I had a couple of these knocking around, so cheated a little bit today. But the clip you've just seen is when we made them last time. So I've got a couple of these, so I'm gonna make this into the clock. It's a bit boring, so I'm gonna do some tweaks to the edges. We're going to put a round over on it, we're going to put some inlay grooves in it, then we're going to set the clock face onto it, and then we're going to make the hands and the, and the actual spindle for it to sit on. It's a simple project today. To begin with, using a V bit in my trim router, I, I cut a small groove around the outside of the clock face. This would allow me to place a bead of epoxy later on to give a, a nice decorative touch to the, the clock. Using the round over bit I rounded over the edges of the, the clock face just to make it a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. cheated this time. I've been to the local craft store and I bought some wooden numbers. So these are going to go on the front face of the clock. Something you don't think about every day, when you're going to spray paint small objects, they're going to bounce around on the, on the worktop as you're spraying them. So in future, it might be an idea to secure them down. So for connecting the numbers to the clock face, I got a a lot of um, rare earth magnets. These are 10 mil wide by three mil deep. So I'm gonna drill a small hole into the clock face which is about three mil deep and sink one of these in and secure it with some CA glue. And on the back of the numbers, I've got some magnetized tape. It's not as strong as the rare earth magnets, but when the two go together, it's gonna hold the numbers in place. Using the trusty masking tape on the drill bit as a stop guide I drilled the small holes for the magnets to sit into. Like a fool, I preset all the magnets in holes to make sure they'd fit and then struggled to get them out. So I used the back of a drill bit to be able to pull them out and this just proved the magnets were fairly strong. I then secured these in with some CA glue and used the, the same drill bit just to drop them back into the holes again. For the outside of the clock face, I'm going to be putting a bead of epoxy, but I don't fancy trying to pour epoxy into a narrow channel, 
So what I'm going to do is I've got older myself some Millie Putt, some epoxy putty, so it means I can roll a, a nice long sausage of epoxy putty, fit it into the actual channel and smooth it out. Leave it set, then I can sand it back and it should be a lot easier and simpler than trying to pour epoxy into that channel. So, <clears throat> with the Millie Putt, you get the two parts of the epoxy just like you would with a pour with you have an activator and the actual resin itself. So I've got to cut off a piece of each, equal quantities, and mix them together. So it's time to play. It's a bit like um, being a kid again, this. It's a bit like the scene in Mission Impossible 1 where he has the chewing gum with two different colours and he has to squeeze the two together. And then once he squeezes them, he has a small timer before they blow up. He blows the side of the actual cafe off in Venice or Vienna. Vienna, that's the one. So, I'm not going to do an Ethan hunt and try and blow something up. You want to shake hands with the devil that's fine with me. I just want to make sure that you do it in hell. I'm going to work these together until they're no longer marbled. At that point, they should be workable. This really was like being back at uh, preschool, playing with the plasticine. Doing this with the gloves on would have been fine if they'd have been latex gloves, but these were vinyl gloves and they made an awful noise every time they got st stuck to the actual uh, putty. I left far too much of a, an excess on this and it caused a lot of problems when it came to sanding it off. So I got the milli put, I sanded it down, then I realised I took half the paint off of the actual piece I was working on. So I've had to revisit it. So what I've done is since the milli put's now sanded down and smooth, I've masked off the milli put initially. I gave the actual clock face a, a coat of pink, which is going to be the final colour anyway. But now what I need to do is remove the masking tape that's on here. But I now need to put a bead of masking tape all the way around the milli put because I need to just do the edge white again. We're, I had a little bit of overspray and a little bit of sanding still to be done. Once that's done, all I need to do then is attach the actual dial or the, the, the hands and then the numbers and we're done. So that's the painting done for this one, he says. I've done several coats of the white. The last couple have been to go over the top of where I put the melee put around the outside and the design in the center. I'm gonna take all the masking off to see how that's coming out shortly. Um, for the mechanism itself, as I said before, it's a manual mechanism. So I've put a T-nut in the back of the actual clock, which allows me to fix a, an M6 bolt through, which is gonna hold the hands in place. I'm going to put a washer in between the actual, both sets of hands and the actual back of the, uh, the front face of the clock to allow ease of movement around. Previously, I cut the hands out of some mounting board which I picked up from Hobbycraft. I wasn't happy with how these turned out. I spent a lot of time making them, as you've seen previously on the video, but I wasn't happy with the outcome. So, I've been in the workshop. I've changed the blade on my bandsaw, which was a priority. As soon as I've done that, I've cut out the hands with the, some 6mm ply and I've just sprayed them up black to go on the actual front of the, the clock. So I'm going to assemble all this together now and then we'll have a quick catch up at the end and talk about things that I want to do different if I ever do this again. Stick around. So there you go. That's a project that should have taken me um, two days tops but it took me about ten weeks. I kept hitting little obstacles in the path and those obstacles kept setting me back and I wanted to get past them before I moved on to any other projects that I had coming up. So there you go, a little clock for Bella to be able to learn to tell the time. It's a completely manual clock so we can set the time and get her to learn to tell it from there. All the numbers are removable so as she gets better with telling the time, we can remove some of the key numbers. So you're down to only the four main numbers of 12, 3, 6 and 9. And eventually you can take all the numbers off and see where she goes from there. And she's got a little sister so once Bella's finished this one, it can move down to the next, next daughter. 
Is there things I'd like to have done better? Yes, first of all, the, the order of which I actually built this could have done uh, a lot better. I could have um, improved what I was doing. And going forward, I know that if I'm gonna be using epoxy, whether that's putty or a pourable epoxy, to make sure I've done that first before I paint. Uh, obviously painting this one, took a, I had to repaint everything after doing the epoxy and the sanding of it. Coming up, I have a couple of little projects um, for personal use um, and also for um, collaborations with a couple of friends as well. Uh, even though Maker Central has been delayed, I still have my Maker's Jenga block to make for that. So that will be coming up in the next few weeks. I'm back on the video making now, seems like I've finally got past this hurdle. So hit the subscribe button, you'll be able to see what I've got coming up. And there'll be a playlist down the bottom of things that I've previously made. See you next time on Sean the Shed. Thanks for watching.